Praise God. Is he worthy tonight of our praise? Yes, sir. Yes, amen. I can stand here all night long, declare his goodness, and still not be able to praise and honor him for yes, Jesus. what he really is. Some would say, because I can't praise him like I need to, I'm not going to praise him at all. But we've got to do something. That's right. And it's not a specific sound that he's looking for. Not looking for a specific skill or ability. But he's looking for someone that's got a heart and wants to praise him. Yes, sir. There's a difference in the presentation of what you give God. Amen. I, I had something on my heart, but the Lord took me back to some scriptures. I was on Wednesday night, and I just felt led. I changed my marker in my Bible and went back to it. I don't have the notes I had the other night, but that's all right. He's got a word for us, and I believe that I'm going to try my best to give that to you, what I feel that that is tonight. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Psalms, chapter number 108. I'll read the first two verses of that chapter. Uh, Brother Price, appreciate you coming, brother. Enjoy being in service with you. I was able to go a week or so ago back in fellowship in a service there at his church, and I appreciated that so much. And I thank God for him being here. Good to see some of you I have never seen before in service with us tonight. Some of my friends, we go back quite a ways. Yeah. And I'm so thankful to see all of you, Brother Turley. It's good to see you and your wife here tonight. I appreciate you guys. Met them just a few years ago. They come out to service when I was preaching at, and they've been several times since. I appreciate them being here tonight. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 108, verse number 1 and 2, says, Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Amen. What a statement that he has delivered in these first five or so words, six words there in the first part of verse number one. Oh God, my heart is fixed that is a statement yes. amen when you say fixed you mean it is completed it's done uh, and from that now it's steadfast it's reliable it's steady it's dependable amen it is for certain it is ready it's you've got to be prepared and ready Amen. When I, I thought about those words and began to study on this and prayed about it I find that, amen, the, what his heart was fixed and what his intentions was set on doing was two things. I'm going to sing and give praise. Come on. That's good. Praise God. My heart is fixed. What I'm, my heart is fixed on is the fact that I'm going to praise you and I'm going to sing songs unto you. Yeah. I, I, and to make a statement in that sense and say that my heart is fixed. When I thought about that and the, the different thoughts that you go through, Brother Price, when you think about something, you, I, I thought of how, amen, how many uh, women you, you fix the cake. You put all the ingredients in the bowl, you mix them up, and you bake that cake, and the icing is on it, it's ready to be eaten. It's fixed. When you come to the point where the icing is on there and it's fixed, to say I forgot to put something in there, I need to go back and do that. Can't do that. It's fixed. You, you can't add to what's fixed. You, you can't change what's fixed. Amen. When I begin to think on that terms, I ask them the other night, I, you know, there's just a difference in the way that you do things. And I ask them how many times when you decide that maybe tomorrow I'm going to fix breakfast for everyone. How many times do you wait till everybody gets up before you start fixing breakfast? 
Amen. The problem with doing that is if you wait till everybody gets up, they're coming in and out of the kitchen. Is it ready yet? I'm hungry. Can we eat now? And you fight the distraction of preparation that you can't stay focused on what you're doing because of so many interruptions and people that are desiring what you're trying to accomplish. And when I think about those things, David was a man that loved to praise God. David found himself in many different times and places where things wasn't favorable to him. But he always found a way. God always brought him through everything that ever rose up against him. When, when you look at David and you think that he's going to be a young boy out tending sheep and there's going to be a lion and a bear comes after him trying to devour the sheep and he is willing to grab that animal, that beast, with his hands and destroy that with his own bare hands. Amen. What kind of faith and honor did he really have to say, I I'm going to stand for what I am here to stand for. He had an obligation to take care of and keep those sheep from the, being devoured and destroyed. And he put himself in harm's way to keep something from destroying what he had the responsibility of. And the only way you can do that is if you know you've got something with you that is greater than what comes against you. When, when you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that God is with you, Amen. The psalmist began to write, and he said, I will not fear what man shall do to me. Amen. Amen. It gives you the confidence to be able to look up and say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. It gives you the confidence to say, I am more than a conqueror. Amen. When you know who you're serving today, because another writer picks it up, and he said, Amen, if God be for us, Amen, who can be against us? Amen, when you know that you are unbeatable, when you know that God that you serve has a reputation, Amen, that, Amen, the Bible says, when King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord high and he was lifted up. And his train filled the temple. You already know, amen, when the kings went out to battle and they conquered a king. Amen, it was well known they would cut off a portion of that train of that king and add it on to theirs. And what every part of that train, amen, the addition on that was, was victories that they had won, amen, under their rulership, under their authority. Amen, the Bible said that his train filled the temple. Amen, I'm here to tell you, amen, what it says is victory filled the temple. Amen, somebody needs to hear that. Why? Because the devil has been trying to destroy you and tear you apart. But you need to know tonight that the God that you serve is greater than anything that will ever rise up against you. The God that you serve has got all power in heaven and not only in earth, but even in the pits of hell. Satan recognizes and bows to the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, I will not fear what man shall do because the God that I serve has more power than any man. He might destroy and may afflict and hurt me. Amen. But there's a God that after all of that is said and done can cast both soul and body into the pits of hell. I'm going to rather fear God. Why? Amen. Because he's been too good to me for me to do anything else. He's been too good to me to lay my faith on the side and try to feel like I can do it myself. I need Jesus, church. I need Jesus. I can't make this journey by myself. I got to know he's my healer. He's my God. He's my strength. He's my peace. He's my comfort. I'm here to tell you the storms are going to rise and the tempest is going to come against you. But I know the master of the wind. Does anybody know it tonight? Amen. You got to know who he is for yourself. You 
you've got to serve him for yourself. Yes. Praise the Lamb of God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. When David begins to ponder all of the things that God has already done for him. Amen. When he was just a child. Amen. Went to visit down in the army and check on his brothers and take some supplies to them. Amen. He hears a sound that causes that same intensity to rise up within him. As he hears the challenge of an enemy that rises and says, Amen, send me out a man to fight. Amen. Amen. Here's what I want you to know about this. Amen. The story that we've heard. Amen. From even childhood. Amen. Is it didn't take a man to beat that giant. Uh, it just took somebody that knew who their God was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you ought to praise him right there. Yeah, yeah. And then you don't have to be something great. You don't have to be powerful. You don't have to be mighty. He said if you got the faith of a little child, amen, if you got that childlike faith, amen, you can break down the giants. You can break down the walls. You can break down everything that rises up against you. Amen, it's not you, but it's your faith in the God you serve. You got to know him. Amen. And know beyond the shadow of a doubt. There is nothing too hard for our God. There is nothing that he cannot handle that he does not have the power over. And there's nothing that he is not able to deliver you. Oh, somebody ought to praise him right now and thank him. He ain't tell you. He ain't never done me nothing but good. How about you tonight? Praise God. When you know who he is, you've got the ability to pin the words and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Hallelujah. I've got the confidence to know that you even prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. While the enemy is trying to destroy me, you have caused me, amen, to sit down at the divine table of the Almighty God and enjoy the fellowship and the presence of the glory, oh hallelujah, of God. And I don't have to worry about the arrows that are flying past my ears because you are my shield. You are my protector. You are my God. You are the one that keeps me when I can't keep myself. You are the one that makes a way when there does not even seem to be one. You are my door when I don't know which way to go. Oh, hallelujah. You're a light that shines in the darkness and brings deliverance to your people. Oh, somebody ought to praise you. confidence to do that. And that's why he was so yeah. eager to praise him. He done been through so many different things. Amen. I didn't say, uh, amen, I tried by different things. I said he came through yeah. all of these things. Amen. amen. Everything the devil tried. Uh, amen. He served a God that made the way of deliverance for him. Yes, amen. amen. And when I begin to think, uh, amen, he sits down and he begins to pen these words. And he said, oh God, my heart is fixed. Amen. I don't want to go back and change anything. I don't want to go back and add anything. I just want to let you know, amen, that anything that comes up against me, amen, it's not going to change me. It's not going to cause me to feel like I don't want to do that anymore. You've been too good to me. I can't change and not praise you. Amen. For the day when I went into the valley and I brought down the giant, I'm not going to change the fact that the bear come out and try to destroy and you girls up inside me and help me to slay the bear and the lion. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to change your heart tonight. You need to remain fixed and shed on the fact that I'm going to praise him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to sing unto him. I don't care who likes it or who don't like it. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to please nobody. I want to please him. I want my praises to come up before him as a memorial. I want him to rise as an incense to transform me out of this robe of natural flesh into the presence of the Shekinah glory of Jehovah. We gotta praise our way 
glory. Now when he says glory, he begins to involve everything about himself. I'm going to praise you with my that intellect. I'm going to praise you with my mouth. I'm going to praise you with my strength. I'm going to praise you with my mind. I'm going to even praise you with myself. You see, sometimes people praise, but they don't include themselves in it. Yes. They offer up that sound of a praise. Amen. The thing is about a praise that touches the heart of God is a praise that does not have to be perfected. It's not how eloquent. Yes. It's not how good you can carry that tune. It's not about how well you play and skill you are in those areas. Amen. It's about do you have something in your heart that you want to bring to God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. David was a man, though, that was talented. He was skillful. He could play on the harp. And we have scriptures that tell us when the evil spirit came and tried Saul, he would play on that harp and that spirit would depart. Amen. I'm here to tell you, he had something about him. That praise was greater than the trial. Oh, hallelujah. Praise was greater than the temptation. Greater than that was come against even not only himself, but other people. He was had the ability to play skillfully unto the Lord and it caused anything that didn't belong in that presence to have to remove itself. Amen. While the glory of God took over. Hallelujah. What kind of praise do you have, church? You got a praise amen, that the devil ain't worried about? Or do you have a praise that causes him to run? Because when you open your mouth and begin to make the sound from your heart, amen, it's a sound that's going to bring the glory and the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. In our midst, do you have a sound that's going to cause, amen, hell to begin to tremble because of the presence and the glory of the great I Am has just, amen, been arose and aroused and brought to the point, amen, tell me what you want, son. Tell me what you need, daughter. And your praise has brought you to deliverance. Your praise has brought you to the point of receiving your miracle from God. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen, I believe. Amen. I, I mentioned the last time I was here, Sister Rachel. Amen, that sometimes we get in routines. And we, we get into a form. And we, we know when we get there, it's going to be prayer requests, yeah. prayer. It's going to be a couple worship songs, a couple testimonies, and then the preacher. And, and I mentioned, Brother Price, I said, sometimes you got to mix it up. Sometimes you got to change it because even the devil gets used to routine. And you know why I was on a Friday night? Sunday we went to church, Brother Dallas, and the brother that led the service. Amen. He, we, we just had started. And we did. We took prayer requests. And he said, I'm going to do something different. I just said that on Friday night. He said, I'm going to do something different. He said, come on, Brother Mark. Preach. Hey, come on. Sometimes the devil is uh, amen, through, uh, amen, to a loop uh, because you just tanked up the plan. Uh, he was ready for this and that and the other, but you done messed it all up because you didn't go his way. Uh, you begin to loop uh, with the spirit uh, and the presence of God. Amen. You didn't think it had to be this way or it had to be that way. And that's the thing about praise. Uh, it don't have to be a certain way. Uh, it just has to have uh, a certain sound. Uh, oh, hallelujah. It's a sound uh, that's got to determine Determination in it that says, God, even though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. Oh, regardless of what goes wrong, I'm not going to sit on my seat and be ungrateful and unthankful. I'm going to rise to my feet. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to lift my voice because even though everything goes wrong, you're still worthy. You're still worthy to be praised. Oh, somebody ought to praise him tonight. He 
says, awake, sultry, and heart, heart. Amen. See, now, even though he can praise God with his mouth, and even though he can use his hands and clap, yeah. God had blessed him with a little more than that. Yes. Now, hey, he was in this frame of mind. I don't want to just praise you a little bit. Yes, amen. Oh, hallelujah. I can do more than that. Hallelujah. Come on, personally, each one of us. Yes. Amen. Think about your effort. Could you do more? Yes. Let me ask you this. What's the scripture say? Whatever your hands find to do, how do you do it? Come on, have you accomplished that? In your praise, in your worship to God, have you accomplished that? Hey Amen. This is what, hey man, this is what David is trying to help us understand. If your heart is fixed, hey amen, you're not sitting there waiting on somebody to come along and pick you up and, and start working and praising God with you. Hey amen, you've got something that can't wait for the song. It don't even have to say, come on, somebody say, but you got started. Hey amen, because you got something inside of you that ain't satisfied sitting around waiting on somebody else. Oh, I gotta praise God and my heart is fixed. I'm gonna praise you. Whether everybody else is talking, they're running around doing this. I gotta praise God. I gotta praise my heart is fixed. I'm gonna praise you with my song. I'm gonna praise you with my lips. Now also I'm gonna get the sultry. I'm gonna get the heart and I'm gonna magnify my praise under you. Oh, somebody needs to know tonight. said I can include and I can bring not just my voice not just my hands but I can bring and then along something else that can magnify and make it louder make it greater because see what happens amen for those that know how to play instruments there is something within us, Brother Dallas, that we hear a sound before we play it. We do. We hear a song and we begin to hear that tune and in our, hey, when we make what comes in our mind and our heart come out of these hands and be sounded across. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Across those fingers. And when you're like David and anointed, it don't take very much of it to cause something to begin to stir in the midst of the congregation. Hallelujah. And whenever, amen, he began to play this, he said, awake. Amen. Listen, it's been too long. Amen. That we've left things that we could be doing. Sit idle on the shelf. We could have been doing more. But we've been satisfied just doing enough. We could have been greater. But we've allowed ourselves. Amen. To be satisfied. And just say that I praise God. Because I clap my hands. Because I said amen. I listen here. you got to get involved in this church. He didn't just come to save your hands. He didn't just come to save your voice. But he came to save every part of you. From the pit. Of hell. And then he said, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. He didn't come just to save part of you. He come to save all of you. So with all of my heart and all of my being and everything that I am, I'm going to praise him with my song. I'm going to praise him with my lips. I'm going to work and do all that I can to bless him. Praise God. But the kicker is this. He said, I myself will get up early. Remember, I asked you this a little while ago. When did you get up and cook breakfast? Do you wait till everybody's running around wanting to know how long it's going to be? Then you know, I'm hungry. I can't already stand it. I've got to have something. And they're running around over here and they're 
grabbing bacon off the plate, and they're grabbing a biscuit and dipping it, and they're running off, and you can't get it fixed for everybody's interruptions. That's right, amen. David said, I'm going to get up early myself to praise you. He says this, I'm not going to wait and let the enemy have the first punch. Yes, amen. If I wait till he gets up and gets started, I might get so distracted that I don't feel like praising him. That's right, amen. Ooh, hallelujah. I may not feel, I might get depressed. I might get discouraged. I might feel like, what's the use? Amen. If I wait until after, amen, everything gets going. I, amen. It's hard to cook breakfast when everybody's running around. I want this, I want that. How long is it going to be? Amen. It's a whole lot easier when you get up early to do it. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For everybody's that rolled over, turned loose of their pillow, and you've already got breakfast made, how much easier is it? You're not, not under stress. You're not under that pressure of trying to hurry up to satisfy what this somebody else needs. I, he said early, well, I seek you. I'm going to get myself up early, and I'm going to start praising you with my voice. I'm going to start praising you with my hands. I'm going to praise you with the psaltery. I'm going to praise you with the harp. I'm going to get active. It's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ambush the devil before he ambushes me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to jump in first, and I'm going to get praise going before he knows what hit him. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there's and in the spirit yes. of the Lord, in the presence of the Most High God, yes. oh, in His presence, His fullness of joy, and at His right hand, their pleasure forevermore. Yes. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, shut the eyes. Keep your ears, I ain't going to wait and let Him get started. I'm going to get going before He has a chance. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. And here's a little idea. Some people wait till they get out of bed and then hit their knees before they start praying. That's okay. But ain't nothing wrong with starting to praise God when your eyes open up. Because you get the first jump at it. Come on, you're back to consciousness now. Come on, how many of you are unconscious when you get to sleep? Yeah, when you wake back up, you're conscious. You're thinking for yourself. And I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to delay. Praising God. Because the longer I delay Amen. is how quick he can jump in there and get things stirred up. Amen, preacher. Amen. 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 When we begin to realize, Amen, just as soon as our eyes will open up, Sister Rachel, Amen, we need to begin to begin praising magnifying God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And, and I'll tell you what it'll do. If you make that a routine and you make that a part of your amen, life every day and then you don't have to wait till you roll out. You just start praying and thanking God for another day and thanking Him for keeping you to another night. And you begin to do that regularly. Amen. I'm here to tell you, it won't be a hardship when it comes church time. That's right. Amen. It won't be a hard thing on, on you when somebody says, Let's worship the Lord. You've got, got worship stirred up, and you just need a place to let it go. I don't know about you, but ain't nothing greater than praising and glorifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Some people are waiting until they get there, and they can crown him as that. But I ain't waiting. I already recognize him as the King of all kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God, the Everlasting.
of Christ. I'm already thankful that I've already got my name. Yeah. And I've already made that confession relatively early. Jesus is Lord. Oh, there is no God, Sister Pam. There's no Messiah. That's right. Amen. There ain't none in front of him. Amen. There ain't none behind him. Ain't none in the, ain't none kind of blow everybody's bubble. There ain't none under him. That's right. Amen. There is no other God. Just because you made it a God don't mean it's a God. Yes. He don't yes. recognize it. That's good. Hallelujah. Hey, hey man, I, I can't really. Hey man, usually in any kind of athletic sport, there's someone that is recognized as a rival. Someone that is recognized as being, hey man, always a tough opponent. Hey man, regardless of how good or bad their season has been. But I honestly can't say that there is a good rival for our God. No yes, right. There is no equal. Right. There's nobody can match up to him. Nobody has the power. I found the Egyptian gods uh, being demolished uh, and they couldn't do nothing about it. Uh, yes. And now they begin to try to mock and, uh, and keep up with the God uh, of Israel. But they rest the point uh, where they said, we cannot. Uh, this is not us. Uh, it's the hand of God. Somebody yes. is hearing me right now. God can do more than the enemy I ever thought of. Uh, God can bring you out yes. of whatever the devil said yes. you'll never get out of. Uh, somebody just got to make up your mind. I'm going to praise him. Live or die, sing or swim. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify. I'm going to lift him up. I'm not going to let the stars keep me from it. I'm not going to let the trial keep me from praising. I'm going to praise him. My heart is fixed. I'm going to praise him. Hallelujah. We all need to be able say those words not just to hear them but because it's real with us my heart is fixed my heart now brings more meaning to the words when the scripture says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth Speaks. Come on, if your heart's fixed, then what the mouth speaks is not doubt. It's not misery, doom, nor gloom. Amen. Out of the heart will come blessings for cursings, good for evil. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus come along teaching them that. He said it's been said an eye for an eye. But I say, amen, if anyone despitefully uses you or, or does something against you, amen, you pray for. Amen. You love. Is that go against the grain or what? Yes, sir. That's just not amen. the normal nature. Well, that's what God said. I don't want you to be normal. Amen. If you're normal, you're like everybody else. Yeah. That's right. If you're not normal, you're like Christ. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Amen. Let me help you just a minute. Amen. Because it's too easy when, when somebody out of the blue comes up against you and they do something, they say something. And it really gets under your skin. And oh, if I could just get my hands on them. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get your heart on them. Yeah. If you can allow your heart to begin to work before your mouth does. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. Amen. Some, some people say it like this. You need to think before you speak. I say you need to pray before you speak. Amen. Amen. Lord, I need you to put a guard over my mouth. I need you to put a watch 
to keep me from allowing what's not in my heart to be running across my lips. Amen. Oh, that's a tough one. But I'm here to tell you, if Jesus is in your heart, what else can come out but Jesus? Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. Because, amen, I'm not going to wait. And here's, here's what I, I was thinking about while I was sitting back here was this very thought. Because we wait, amen, until after he gets up and he gets started. Everything from that point is a reaction. It's not an action. It's a reaction. It's to what he's done against us. We react to that. We respond to that. Amen. If we would act first, we would put him on the guard. He would have to respond. And here's the thing about it. There is no response for praise. Oh, somebody hear me right now. Good stuff, yes, sir. There is no response for someone that is praising the true God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. As hard as he would like to stop it, amen, he's tried many different ways. He thought if I throw it in a furnace, I'll burn it up and it won't happen again. Amen. He said if I can throw it in a den of lions, amen, they'll devour it and I won't have to hear it again. He said if I beat it and I lock it up in prison, I, I won't have to hear it again. Uh, amen. But I believe uh, as Peter or uh, by Paul and uh, Silas was there, uh, amen, looked at one of the other and said, uh, what do you think we ought to do? Uh, and he said, I, I believe I want to start singing. Uh, I think I just want to start praising the Lord. Uh, I've got blood running from the wounds uh, where I've been beaten. Uh, I've got bruises and sores uh, all over me where I've been abused. Uh, but I just feeling myself right now. I want to lift up the name of Jesus. I want to sing and I want to magnify because I was counted worthy to suffer for someone that suffered for me. Oh, hallelujah. That suffered for me. Oh, hallelujah. We need to be thankful and bless him and praise him. Amen. We've got to be the man identified in his suffering so we can be identified in his resurrection. I don't know about you, but I ain't planning on staying here. I ain't planning on remaining dead in a grave. But I plan on a trumpet sounding one day and I'm coming up. I don't care where I'm at. I'm going into the air and I'm going to meet Jesus. Yes. I'm going to be my Savior. I'm going to be my Redeemer. I'm going to be my God. Oh, does that make you anxious? Does that stir you today? Oh, hallelujah. We need to praise Him and magnify who He is and what He's going to do. Yes. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Praise God. My heart is fixed. Hallelujah. Brother Dallas, I'd like to look at you and say your heart is fixed. Brother Price, I'd like to say your heart is fixed. But the truth is, you got to declare that. Amen. I can only declare what I'm responsible to have power over. Now you're the one that's got to take care of yours. Set it in order like it should be. You this. You said it in order like it should be. You'll never one time ever wish you had done it any different. Amen. Don't think you'll have a regret since you didn't do it sooner. Amen. Uh, Amen. I've heard I've heard many elders that didn't get saved until they was gray headed. And they said, My only regret is I didn't come earlier. I didn't come sooner. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 What about you tonight? Is your heart fixed? Is your heart fixed? Come on, you can you can have power over what has the power over you right now. That's right, amen. See the devil comes by and he, he just whispers a threat against you. And we're so captivated by that threat. We immediately bow under his control. You don't have to do that. The scripture said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of whose might? Yes. 
his life. And understand this. When you are the weakest, that's when he's the strongest. Oh, somebody ought to be thanking him. Somebody ought to be thanking him right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My heart. My heart is fixed. I can't do anything else. It's, it's it is. It's, it's where it needs to be with God. Is that, is that ours? Can we say that tonight? Yes, it's, yeah, I'm where I need to be at with God. I, yeah. I, I can get closer. I can get stronger. But you know, that understand this. The way to get stronger is to turn let loose of more of the flesh. Uh, the longer you hold on to the flesh, you're still weak. You have to be, you ever saw them little kids they run around three and four years old with a pacifier? Five years old with a pacifier? Why is it? They're still holding on to it. You can't grow and advance until you. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you're going to get strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you got to get rid of the flesh. Got to get rid of the pacifier. Almighty God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. I think I'm finished. Amen. I think I'm finished tonight. But I want you to know this. We should be able, without any kind of afterthought or any kind of doubt, no, right at this very moment, my heart is fixed. If the creditor comes tomorrow to take everything that I own, my heart is fixed. Amen. Death comes and take my closest loved one. My heart is fixed. Come on, they're, 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 we're in flesh, we're in life, we're in humanity. There are things that flesh harder than other things. But if we can come to that point, Brother Bryce, where we praise God regardless, I'm here to tell you that God can give you that peace he said he would give you. He said it would pass understanding. Amen. And let people look at you and marvel that you're still coming to church. My dad died when he was 44. It's been 30 some years ago. My boy, right before he was born, he's 35 now, I believe. And he died. We had his wake at our church. And I went up and played music at his wake. How can you do that? Your heart's broken. I played with him all my life. We worked in church together. My last memories, all my memories, was church related. Why would I not participate in the going home ceremony? I'm here to tell you the presence of God came in that place. Oh, it was awesome. It was amazing to see the Spirit of God working at a wake. Oh, hallelujah. God is able, church. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Amen. For a little while, if you feel like you want to, won't you just come around the altar and find you someplace tonight? Let's just pray those words to God. My heart is fixed, God. I'm going to praise you with my glory. Everything that I am, everything that I have, everything that I can do, I'm going to praise you with it. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to beat the devil into praising before he can begin to fight me. 
before he can hinder and stop my heart from praising. And Lord, if I'm going to praise you, my heart is fixed. Hallelujah. Let's just pray for a while. Let's just.